Hey guys, what's up? This is Tony from alphapursuits.com. In this video, we are going to talk about what to do when the stock market crashes. Stay tuned. This information is for informational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before placing any trades. So to set the stage, let's talk about how often stock market crashes and corrections happen. So I did a quick Google search and found two articles. One says that between the 1980 and 2018, there were 37 corrections. So that's about 38 years, 37, so that's about one a year. And average, it was 15.6% decline for S&P 500. So obviously some are bigger, some are smaller. Then the article, this one is more recent, seems like. It was published uh, March this year, 2021. And it's saying that there were 38 corrections from the beginning of 1950. So that's approximately 1.87 years of at least 10%. So obviously these two, uh, they probably use a slightly different definition. Maybe the one that ha this one is counting more often is probably uh, a smaller corrections that it's also counting, whereas this one uh, seems to only count at least 10% decline, and that would happen every two years. So the message here is it happens quite often. And the question is, so what do we do when it happens? How do we know how far or how big these crashes or corrections is going to be. And for that, uh, there are several tools that I use, and one of them uh, is actually looking at VIX. So let's move on to Thinkorswim, and let me show you uh, what I do by looking at various VIX uh, indicators. So let's take a look at the charts first before we move on to a more detail about different VIX indicators. And on at the top here, this is VIX. At the bottom here, it's SPX. And obviously, one of the tools that we could use is to do analysis on the charts. And as you can see, I have drawn uh, some support and resistance line as well as a trend line to see how far, most likely, uh, the, the most recent drop that's happening right now is going to be. And obviously, you already bleached uh, this support and resistance line here. Uh, and so the next stop will likely to be this moving average line, which seems to be uh, working pretty strongly right now. As for today, um, it is stopping right there. If it penetrates that, most likely you'll be this next support and resistance line. So by using the charts, we could sort of guess uh, how far uh, that the market is going to drop. Then, like I said, when we overlay VIX and XPX, uh, we can see a quite interesting uh, similarity here. So every time VIX spikes, XPX drops. And the reason for that is VIX measures the options uh, activity of, of XPX. So, so obviously they are correlated. Uh, and you know it doesn't happen always when the market drops that VIX spikes. Uh, to illustrate that, we can see uh, you know, here and there, even though the market didn't drop too much, uh, VIX also also spike, um, is spiking in those instances. So what we want to do is to really uh, try to figure out, okay, based on the most recent largest drop or you know most recent uh, few corrections, if the VIX spike that much um, and and compare the most recent spike or the current spike to those. Is this going to be much worse or is this going to be not too bad? And, and that's really what we want to know because if it is going down the toilet, so to speak, then we, we should really just get out of the market, step on the sideline, and, and watch and see how 
bad it is going to be. And once he gets to the top, uh, the, the, going past the worst point, which uh, also correlates uh, a lot of time when the market bottoms, you know, at the, at the very bottom and VIX reaches the top and they start coming down. And then that's really when we can uh, come back into the market and, and start buying up uh, those cheap stocks if you're trading stocks or opening new options uh, contracts if you're trading options. So let me show you, um, in addition to this, what, what else we can do with VIX. And one thing we could do is to look at the uh, historical implied volatility of VIX. We can use the ratio. So there are several different flavors of VIX. There's VIX 9D, which measures uh, volatility for only nine days. VIX is about 30 days. And VIX 3M is obviously three months. So we are looking at three different time frame here and comparing the ratio. So let, let's start with the implied volatility here. So this is looking at VIX implied volatility. And as we can see, whenever there's a huge spike, the, uh, the, the red line spikes up. So that, that kind of gives us a indication, a, a warning sign that, you know, we, we should start, be careful. And the most recent spike when COVID-19 happened, there was a mini spike there and that red line actually went above and then it stayed above and never came down. And, and so, you know, in addition to use this as a warning, we could also use this as a sign where uh, probably moving forward, the market is going to be pretty calm. Um, and, and we can sort of see that when, when the red line is below uh, this green line or blue line, depending on how you look at it, um, you can see, you know, it just keeps declining. So it's pretty safe uh, time in case if you trade VIX related uh, products, uh, for example, VXX or UVXY. So the reason I, I monitor this is because I, I do trade uh, those uh, ETPs, electronic traded uh, products. And, and so this, this is why it's very useful, not only just by monitoring the market, but also if, in case if you trade VXX or UVXY. So just put that into context with the most recent spike, as we can see, you know, the red line is picking up, the green line, the blue line is picking up, um, but the red line hasn't really crossed um, the blue line. And, and so most likely we, we haven't top, reached to the top yet. We, you know, this is a lagging indicator, obviously. Um, so whenever the top is reached, then you, you will show us that that was the top. Um, so by looking at this, it, it looks like, well, probably it's, it's, we haven't get to the, the top yet, so we, we should not do something crazy right now and wait a little bit longer. And looking at the ratio here, so VIX and VIX 9D ratio, same kind of picture here. So we're looking at uh, the you know, average, and, and so by looking at that, we can see, well, obviously right now the, the pink line is way above and we have to wait until that crosses back down to the blue line to make sure that it's safe. And um, again, this is just one of the indicators that we are looking at. So just, just don't just rely on one, we should look at multiple. So, you know, just because it crossed doesn't mean it's safe because if you look at it, it, it did continue to go up a little bit more after that. And this one, like I say, it's lagging, so it already topped out and then it came back down and then uh, that it, it took a while for it to actually cross back down. And looking at VIX 3M, so same kind of picture here, and this is more looking at most of the long term. So this doesn't move as rapidly or as vigorously as VIX 9D. And so whenever there is a big spike like this, which means a looking at a little bit longer term, some people seem to be a little bit worried. And this happened as well uh, back in November, end of October last year. 
And, and so when a huge spike like this happen, uh, we should really just step on the sideline and, and don't open any new positions uh, until we, we see a sign uh, that the market is likely going to calm down and likely that is when the market hits the bottom and you will start recover. So here again, we are looking at uh, slightly different things actually. Uh, so we're looking at VIX90, VIX, VIX3M, VIX, and then VVIX and VIX. So VVIX is volatility of volatility. It is looking at volatility of VIX. And what I've done here is basically a simple calculation. This is just VIX90 minus VIX, VIX minus VIX3M, and then VVIX minus VIX. And the reason I have set it up like this is when the market, market uh, goes down, when, when there's a high uh, volatility, then it will spike up. So looking at the daily chart here, we can see when the COVID-19 happened last year, uh, for the VIX 90 minus VIX, it spiked up pretty fast. Uh, even within one day, um, you can see, you know, in a couple of days, I mean, even one day, you can see a huge jump uh, from negative number to a positive number. And looking at the most recent one, uh, we don't really see a sudden jump like that. As we can see, you know, it, it's, it was, it's still negative, still somewhat negative, and then went to positive a little bit. And then today it is uh, definitely positive. So the velocity of increase isn't as dramatic, obviously, as when COVID-19 happens. So I'm hoping, obviously we, we cannot tell for sure, but I'm hoping that this spike is not going to be uh, as big. And looking at the 30 minutes chart here, uh, yesterday, you know, it, it went all the way up to four and then now it's hovering at around at two. So it seems to have calmed down a little bit, uh, but still it, it's, it's pretty high considering you know when it was calm it was negative four and we can essentially do the same thing for the other two as well so VIX, VIX3M and VVIX and VIX and and so by looking at all these three uh, we can sort of gauge and, and, and get a feel of um, how bad this is so for example VIX3M if both VIX3M and VIX90 are spiking uh, that's probably something, you know, more, more profound compared to when only VIX 90 is spiking or when he, only when VVIX is spiking. Um, obviously, you can see VVIX spikes uh, a lot more often compared to other two. And, and so, you know, when, when all three comes together, and obviously that's what's happening right now, um, and this is, again, why I'm saying perhaps we should step on the sideline and, and, and watch the market a little bit and see what's going on um, before really open any large positions. And let me show you one more, um, which is not VIX related, but I have a, a different video that already talks about this, but I want to show you again um, in this video um, so that you, you can see, you know, there are different ways that we can look at the market and see what's going on. So for these indicators, uh, VOID, ADD, and TICK, I learned this from shadowtraders.net, so I, should, I need to give uh, full credit to them, and I'll include the link in the video uh, description so that if you are interested, you can take a look at uh, how they actually set this up and uh, how they use these tools. Now, for my purpose, uh, I have created uh, a different video talking about this already so i also include the link down in the video description uh, if you're interested in looking at that one um, but in, in this video i want to briefly just you know touch up on in addition to what we already look at what else we can look at as well so here we are looking at basically the volume so this is the net volume of 
uh, buy and sell. So if, for, for example, today we are seeing this negative volume, red negative volume, that means there's a lot more selling than buying when added up buying and selling volumes. Then here's the number of stocks uh, today for, for, with a positive price or negative price. So we can see uh, almost 2,000 stocks on New York Stock Exchange uh, that has a negative pricing compared to yesterday. So it's not as bad as yesterday because right off the bat when the market opened, it declined to 2,500 stock, had a less, um, had a lower price compared to the day before. And today it's not as bad, even though it is seems to be still declining on this 15 minute chart. And then tick is basically, you know, the, the orders, the the buying and selling pressure. And then we can see, you know, obviously a lot more selling here. Uh, and again, like I mentioned in the other video, I, I don't really use this extensively because I, I don't really look at the market all day. That's not the way I trade. I'm not a day trader. Um, so I, I don't really care too much about this, but it's just an additional indicator for me to see uh, what's going on in the market. So the cool thing about this is that, as you can see um, by looking at, so we have SPX, uh, NDX, and Russell. Um, so, you know, we can see, for example, XPX, the price didn't change too much this particular day. Uh, and it was a pretty bullish day because the the volume, the buying volume is shooting up. Whereas the day after, um, even though the price didn't really move right off the bat, we can see uh, there is some selling pressure. In other words, it's not as bullish as the day before. It's sort of a little bit positive, but not too positive. And, and so, you know, like I said, this allows us to really see what's going on underneath the hood uh, so that we, we don't freak out just because something drops like substantially like this. And if there's not too much uh, sort of negative indication, uh, this is bad. Um, so, you know, if we look back at when the coronavirus um, happened, we could see a really straight down line uh, like like this one, but more 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 significant um, continuously for a few days. So you know we, we are not seeing that here right now. So um, obviously we, we we are not likely going to see the same kind of decline. But nonetheless, it is a a correction which we don't know how far it is going to go. Um, even though we, we do have a few gaps here and there that needs to be filled, um, so likely the price will recover. It just we, we don't know when it will happen, obviously. Um, but again, like I said, by looking at all these indicators, it helps us not to you know overbuy, oversell, step on the sidelines so that we can make a judgment, not emotional judgment, but, but more... Uh, based on you know technical and fundamental analysis. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumb up, uh, subscribe to the channel so you'll get notification for the next video and I'll see you in the next one.